The first point I want to discuss is actually how you produce your sound. Mm. Yeah? Because we will get into how to decorate it, but I want to talk about how to produce. We make sound with a bow, mm -hmm. but the bow is actually, because see, this is not connected. This, I, I, it's like a foreign thing. I can put my hand and take away. This is connected. In the middle of a concert, you don't do this. <laughs> you know, this is, this is an extension of your hand. Mm -hmm. yeah? And being an extension, it should feel like your hand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And many times when you play, slow or fast, yeah. I see this. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you, anything in life do you do like this? where all your joints are connected and blocked. Like writing emails, uh, eating, talking on the phone. No, that's robotic. Uh -huh. yeah? yeah? Do you understand? So now, if I'm going to let go, all the joints that I have between the stick, between touching the bow, which I have to do all the time, unless I play pizzicato, and my body. <laughs> There are six of them, six joints. I'll count with you. One, the little one, uh -huh. two, three, see, the knuckle, uh -huh. four, the wrist, five, elbow, uh -huh. and six, the shoulder. All of them are joints that can be relaxed and can be tight. It's like, do you know what's the water dam? Yeah. Yeah. That you can shut off the dam, and then all the water that goes will will stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you play, and when you get excited, especially, like when you want to say something, whoop, all blocked, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then yeah. you play like this. So we need to first learn how to recognize them, to feel them, mm -hmm. and I want to start with number six, which is for me the the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So put your hand on the cello in the frog and imagine that you are hanging on an imaginary back of a chair mm -hmm. okay now your shoulder the, the bone inside the socket can you move it up and down so sideways so, so this is up and down do it up down now move backwards yes forward and finally which is cello sideways now, sideways, the shoulder is extended with the arm, yeah? With the elbow yeah. and the rest of it. But put your left hand fingers right here and see if you can feel it moving. Yes. Yeah, look, right there, there's, you can feel the bone moving. Yeah. That movement is how we start the sound. We start it right here. Now, if you block it... <laughs> to move the shoulder but also to react to the movement of shoulder with your elbow good this motion i call in my studio the chicken wings so it's like ta -ga -da -ga -da -ga -dum, ta -ga -da. you know this dance <laughs> so now we have two joints that we know how to relax we activate the shoulder and the elbow okay do this good now the wrist is what we call a connector. It connects the creator, the elbow and shoulder, what creates a sound, the movement. Mm -hmm. It connects it to what I call the articulator. It has a finger, like your cello tongue, the, the one that articulates the sound. So if the wrist is blocked, the articulation and the sound will never, never be connected to each other. Mm -hmm. And again, I refer you to real life. When you do stuff, when you pick up something from the floor, you would never have given order to your wrist to actively move. Mm -hmm. The wrist is reacting to the movement of the fingers or to the movement of holding your phone, cutting something with a knife. It will react, but it won't create movement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, now, we are hanging on an imaginary chair. Put your bow away. And you see... Exactly. The, the, the wrist, everything is falling. Now I'm going to take my left hand and gently push my forearm back and forth. And by doing that, 
what I will do is I will create reaction with my wrist. Mm -hmm. You see, if I move my forearm and my wrist is relaxed, do you see how it moves? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, it's not, there's no trick. I'm just relaxing it, try. Yes. So imagine in some kind of a world where you could play, actually be at time, stiff and, and with power, but at the same time, the wrist would be relaxed and reactive. So you could articulate a lot, but also have movement. Yeah? So let's see if you can do it. Put the bow on the, on the cello and activate shoulder and wrist. So we're creating a big smiling face movement. Good. Excellent. Now, that's beautiful. I never seen that before. <laughs> now, the, the articulator. Uh -huh. Imagine that your fingers are not just hanging and moving the bow. They're actually articulating the bow. So a down bow, put your hand like this, and imagine that you're holding a living heart. So it pumps in, out, in, out. And what pushes it in and out is your thumb. The thumb, yes. So instead of in and out, we're gonna say down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, Put the ball on the cello, hold it, hang on an imaginary chair with your elbow, and pump your heart down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, I want you to do this. Play an up bow on a low string, G, and then come back on a D. But do this. your elbow you don't need to I, I want you to learn how to create the movement of your cello tongue good bravo now do it on the same string but the apple open it more open close open close and when you open go below the string and close above Below, above, below, above. Now add to it the chicken move, chicken wing. With a pumping. Pump more, pump. Yeah. Now if you play. So I create the movement with shoulder and elbow, but I create articulation with my fingers. Not 